Hi, my name is Jad, and today I'll talk to you about Jordan's student welfare initiatives. Jordan is a small country in the Middle East, and it's also where I grew up and where I went to school. I've been teaching here for the last couple of years. What I'm going to focus on particularly are the directives that have gone into place as a result of the refugee crisis in the region. Jordan is a country that's surrounded by conflict, and particularly since 2011, during the Syrian civil war, Jordan accepted a couple million refugees and asylum seekers. So the purpose of this video is to highlight what the Ministry of Education has done in Jordan since the beginning of the Syrian civil war. And what that means is I'll be looking at what these educational directives are and who they serve. I'll be looking at uh, which organizations are assisting the Ministry of Education in Jordan, and I'll uh, talk a little bit about what a day-to-day -day life looks like for a student and, uh, and teachers, and what that means in terms of the bigger picture. I'm going to uh, leave a link to this uh, PowerPoint presentation that I created um, on a discussion form, and so you can uh, view it if you want to revisit anything that I just said. Um, and I'm just going to put myself off the screen just so you can see what I'm doing. This is Jordan Student Welfare Initiatives, and that's a, an image of Petra, if you've probably seen that before. Let's start off by talking about refugees and asylum seekers. Like I said, uh, Jordan is a country surrounded by conflict, and lately it's been a, an influx of Syrian refugees. Uh, particularly, we can see the bottom number there that talks about refugee count in Jordan. This is uh, legal status. It's not necessarily talking about who has fled war. Um, there are certainly a number of uh, people in the millions that have fled Syria but have integrated with non-refugee status in Jordan. 83% uh, of these refugees live in urban areas, whereas there is a small percent that live in camps on the fringe of uh, uh, near the borders. These are urban schools that we're talking about that are witnessing overcrowding, not in, 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 in not only in part by these uh, refugees and uh, and expatriates, but um, as a part of just uh, an inability to uh, accommodate everybody. The total population also is uh, is about 10 million in Jordan, so we can see it's a sizable number, a sizable percentage of the population is uh, non-Jordanian. Some of the challenges that Jordan faces on a day-to-day -day basis are overcrowding in schools, high dropout rates, low graduation rates, and low family income, uh, violence in, uh, in, in a domestic setting and at school uh, does occur, uh, as it does in many, many parts of the world. By and large, majority of the country gets by with a, with a very low income. Uh, this is not just refugees, but Jordanians as well. Uh, this in turn leads to teachers that cannot meet their students' needs and students that uh, have significant learning gaps. And here, particularly, if we're talking about refugees that have uh, lost many years of education, uh, this is a significant problem for them. Uh, child labor is uh, very large in Jordan, uh, and sort of uh, in converse to that, unemployment is a huge problem as well, uh, basically because pro poverty is a huge issue in Jordan. Uh, low wages and job insecurity uh, is perpetuated by that. Girls are at a higher risk of abuse at, at home and school, as well as dropping out of school. So we can see that there is uh, some sort of significant social problem in Jordan. Some of the proposed solutions don't just occur from the Ministry of Education in Jordan. Um, they've partnered with, with uh, numerous foreign humanitarian organizations that provide funding and development. Many of them have been adopted by the Ministry of Education and uh, a plan to integrate refugees has been at the core of this uh, uh, of this initiative, uh, not leaving them in camps, but trying to uh, bring them together, uh, since the culture is very similar within this with this region of the world: Middle East, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine. The UNHCR, UNICEF, and UNESCO they've been attempting to uh, create these initiatives and to uh, execute them as well. The intended outcome is to uh, not only just elevate the quality for these refugees, but to elevate it for Jordanians um, as well, to provide equi equitable access regardless of uh, household income. And the intended audience is from about three years old until uh, adulthood. I'll talk about higher education uh, possibilities later. These initiatives help uh, Jordanians and uh, 
in turn, you know, fixing the infrastructure, providing better access for everybody. The benefits include not, not needing to provide documentation, so there's no prejudice in that way. Uh, just show up to school and you can attend. Uh, before graduating, though, you do need to show some sort of, you know, birth certificate or some sort of passport. Learning support and exam prep classes that can help students get prepared for universities and higher education. There are uh, teacher trainings for local hires. Uh, I've attended a couple of these uh, teacher training seminars that are usually online, and I've met with other local teachers as well. It's a very fascinating situation since they actually serve as, uh, as half teachers and half social workers. Since attendance is compulsory, it's a, we, would, we would hope that 75% of the time it's a safer environment for the students to be at school than at home. A lot of students and a lot of families do not uh, have literacy skills, and so these services are provided by these uh, humanitarian NGOs. As a, as a result, what this means is that these directives guarantee access to educational instruction, they guarantee a daily routine and socialization, uh, integration into society and culture, and allowing students to catch up, as the initiative said. On the other hand, some of the downsides are that there is a high concentration of students in schools. The measurable success will not be visible within the first 10 years. Uh, we're really looking at students that have been in the system for about a decade or two decades. What is the outcome? It's still yet to be seen. Teachers that are still overworked and, and now, I, like I said, working two jobs. One as a social worker or a liaison with, with NGOs and another one as a teacher. And then this, I would call it, in my own words, a band-aid approach. It's, uh, it's not addressing the, the core issue of political stability, national stability. Refugees are meant to be temporary, they're meant to, and this is the government policy in Jordan. They're integrating them for, for now, but uh, this issue is, is a slightly more nuanced thing that uh, people are still preparing for the future for. To continue with some of these benefits, there are scholarships, and a lot of funding goes towards these refugees and students, whether they become Jordanian citizens or whether they retain their status. Basically, it covers their living expenses and their uh, their school materials. I've met with a lot of these uh, students before through some of my colleagues that, that teach and volunteer with uh, refugee camps or refugee uh, homes. They're not necessarily able to provide for themselves, and so this government aid and help is, is, uh, is crucial, as well as uh, providing career opportunities and professional development for these students as they grow up. Uh, many of them have been in the system for a long time, and so it's important to see how they can fend for themselves much later uh, as they've grown up into adults and see where the funding may go in, in other ways since the funding was meant to be temporary. In summary, how does this policy affect schools in general and teaching and learning in particular? Um, in my personal situation, I don't see very many students uh, holding refugee status since I teach at a private school, but I do have many students that come from Syria and Iraq and Lebanon and Palestine that have all faced some sort of refugee crisis, whether not directly but indirectly from their uh, relatives or their other friends and family. So understanding how the current educational initiatives and the current policies play a part in their daily lives is important uh, for global citizenship. I think that this is a, a huge takeaway. Here are my references and you can find this uh, PowerPoint um, in the discussion board. I'll share it over there. Thank you so much for watching.